Right, Mr. Palmer here. Got a video on uh, bubble shorts. So hopefully we're going to record this one with no weird things happening while uh, I'm doing it. God knows what Windows Update is doing in the background. Right. So uh, for my students who keep asking me to put background music, here's one for you. Go watch I Am La Saga featuring the Sons of Man. So the big question is how does a bubble sort work? Okay, before you do this, make sure you've gone over um, arrays. Okay, so you know how to basically uh, loop through an array okay so we've got a list so here I've got five four three six eight got these numbers they're not in any kind of order and I want to sort them could be from low to high could be from high to low choice is yours okay um, obviously a good way of storing those numbers could be in a list it could be in um, an array all right so the steps of a bubble sort basically are you step through your list you compare adjacent items and you swap them if they're in the wrong order Okay, and you keep repeating the swaps until no more swaps are necessary. So you are basically going through your list, swapping each of these items. Then you need to go back through the list again and keep swapping and back through the list again and keep swapping until you don't need to swap anymore. So what does that look like? Okay, so if you're going to see this kind of in action over here, right? Uh, I've got a list of items, okay? So five, two, three, four, one. So if I'm going to swap the first two items, the, the first two items, if I compare them, I can see that. Uh, five is greater than two, so I'm going to swap them around. So then my list now looks like two, five, three, four, one. Okay, so obviously I'm support, um, swapping, sorting my list into ascending order. All right, I'm going to now look at the next two items. So five and three, again, they get swapped. I compare the next two items, five and four, they get swapped. And then uh, by the time I get to my final swap, okay, uh, I can see five and one again, and they need to be swapped. So by the end of my first pass, through the list, I've done four swaps, okay, and you can see basically what's happened there. And you, the 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 five has shifted um, to the right hand side of the list, okay. So this is called a bubble sort because you can see that heavy items kind of sink towards the right hand side of the list, and and the lighter items bubble up to the top of the list. All right. So if I do my second pass, you can see what happens to it. Again, two and three, no need to swap. 3 and 4, no need to swap, 4 and 1, there is a need to swap, and then 4 and 5, no need to swap. So that 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, that's what my the state of my list is like at the end of my second pass. And then basically I keep going through the list, again, uh, passing through the list each time, swapping adjacent items if they match that criteria, that one is greater than the other. All right. Now on the fourth pass, uh, you can see 2, 1, 3, 4, 5. So I need to swap the two and the one, and so I get one, two, three, four, five. It's there in the red, but I had to do a swap. So even though I've gone through the whole of the array now, um, and I've got up to that purple line where the array is, that's the final um, comparison for that pass, and I haven't needed to do a further swap, but I actually needed to do a swap on that pass. So what will happen is my bubble sort will have to do a fifth pass through the um, through the array, and there are no more swaps need to be done. So then the assumption is now that there are um, that the list is sorted in correct order. Okay. So uh, what would that look like in an algorithm? All right. If these are the steps of a bubble sort, I like you to hit pause and have a go at trying to write an algorithm. Okay. And then you can compare it and see if you got the right idea. So I'm assuming you hit play again after um, having a go at writing an algorithm. So this is what my algorithm looks like. Okay, I got an array. Okay, I also have declared n, all right, uh, as the length of the array. And so then basically, oh, I also need a boolean flag. Okay, to see um, if uh, I have done a swap on this uh, uh, pass or not. So I've got a, uh, a loop. You can see I've got a post condition loop there. So while I have not had to swap anything, all right, I'm going to loop through my array. So this is an inner loop. And if my array item i is greater than uh, i minus 1, then I'm going to swap array i and i minus 1 around. Okay. So even though my uh, array starts at index 0, I starts at one, so I can compare my right hand item with the left hand item, I minus one. Okay, and then if I have had to do a swap, then I need to set swapped to true. 
so then basically my inner loop will my flag will be set to true so i've had to do a swap so then my outer loop will go one more time passing through the array checking to see if any more swaps need to be done if you got stuck on the swap you didn't get how it worked if i've got two integers a and b i want to swap them around so that b now equals to five and a equals ten uh, i need to have a temporary integer okay so which is going to be equal to a then i can make a equal to b and then b can be equal to temp so i'm using a third variable to to store that value so likewise um, i can swap them around by having a temporary value holding the uh, array i then array i can be equal to the left hand uh, item the left hand element and then i can set my um uh, array i minus one the left hand element to temp all right uh, and that's it basically so you should be able to uh, understand how a bubble sort works so you've got the lower items bubbling up to the top lower value items bubbling up to the top of the list and the high heavy items sinking to the bottom of the list okay and you should understand how the algorithm is working or you should be able to write an algorithm for that and even implement it in a high level language of your choice